Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Obviously, a really disappointing loss for Nebraska Friday night against Illinois. We hopped on immediately, kind of talked about what we thought went wrong for Nebraska on Friday night, but didn't get a ton of opportunity to call, to really talk about the things that we liked coming out of that game against Illinois. And I get the conversation has to be more situated around, all right, what do we need to clean up? But you can also get some positive takeaways from that football game. And at the top of the list, as I continue to watch that game back, cornerback Sayer Wright came in for Tommy Hill and played his absolute tail off. And not only a guy that I expect to play as Tommy Hill continues to get back from that injury, but I think more importantly, I think Sayer Wright showed that he can be a difference maker for this Nebraska defense going through the rest of 2024, which is you know, a massive storyline for Nebraska, the Nebraska fans that have been listening to the boys going back to the off season. One of our biggest concerns was what does the depth look like at cornerback? I think Matt rule had that same concern. So he goes out and gets a year, right? A guy that didn't play a ton in 2023, but you've seen him play good football during his time at USC was a former top 100 national prospect. It sounds like say you're right, or at least looks like say you're right. Is starting to put it together for Nebraska Massive storyline. Want to get into what we really liked from Sayer, right? Pull up a little bit of the film before we get into it. As always, just want to say thank you to you guys and to the Nebraska fans. Y'all know I love talking this program, whether it's the highs, whether it's the lows. You guys continue to show a ton of support. I can't thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with kind of talking about the position Sayer Wright had to come into. And this was an Illinois team that we said have two legit NFL guys at the boundary wide receiver spot. I would go as far and say that's probably the best or one of the best wide receiver rooms that Nebraska is going to see throughout 2024. I think you get a better one against Ohio State and you might get a better one against USC. But outside of that, looking at their schedule, this is one of the more talented wide receiver rooms that Nebraska will see. And I thought, say you're right, not only held his own, I thought he was phenomenal for Nebraska, played 51 snaps, didn't miss a tackle, had four targets, only gave up two catches for 10 yards, had some really nice moments in run support, but also had some really nice moments coming off the edges of Blitzer, obviously with that strip sack that we'll get into. I want to start in coverage. And I think the, the most fascinating storyline is this is one of the first plays that Sayer Wright had in this football game, right? Kind of was thrusted into duty with Tommy Hill going out with that plantar fascist injury. Illinois is going to go right at Sayer Wright. You're going to play a cover one with a five-man pressure. I mean, Sayer Wright at the bottom of your screen right here is essentially on an island in third and six. And I think Luke Altmeyer sees that we're in man coverage, knows that, hey, I want to go pick on maybe the new cornerback that's coming into this football game. I get there's a pass interference on this play, but as you go through, this is, I think, textbook stuff from you, right? Right in phase, getting his hands on the wide receiver, really not having that much contact, closing the throwing window. You take a look at the replay. This is winning football. Like I don't think this pass interference call is going to get called very often in football games, probably less than 10% of the time. If you can consistently have reps like this, like that's how you win football games right here. Again, he's on an island. You're playing cover one, so you got one safety high. He knows he doesn't have a ton of help behind him, but he also knows he has to squeeze down because it's third and six. I mean, in phase, disrupting the wide receiver off the line of scrimmage and then closing on the throwing window, I, that's teach tape to me. And again, it's unfortunate that they called pass interference on that play, but I, you're going to win a lot of football games playing that way. And I think the fascinating story is the next drive, they try to get him with a double move, right? Second and eight. Again, you look at Sayer Wright kind of playing on that island towards the field side here. They just went after him on a little comebacker. Now they're going to try to get him on a double move. And I think what's so good about this is, one, he's right in phase. Luke Altmaier gives a little bit of a pump fake, tries to work the ball down the boundary. Sayer Wright's doing this perfectly. I mean, squeezing the wide receiver right to the boundary. This is Pat Bryan. This is probably their best wide receiver they have on this team. I don't think it gets much better. And again, what you see here, Ron, Really, really clean. I mean, he's in phase, sees Pat Bryan turn it upfield, gets his hands on him, squeezes him out to the boundary, then gets his head around to find the football. I don't think you can play this play any better than what Sayer Wright did. And they asked him to be on an island a couple of different times in this football game. And I thought every single time Sayer Wright 
came up with some really good plays. I don't think it gets much better than that. Now, I think the second thing I want to note with Sayer right is that he probably played the hardest of any Nebraska player on defense. When he took the field, you could tell he was itching to take the field, and you could tell he wants to stay on the football field because he played with his hair on absolute fire, not only coming after the passer, not only in coverage, but also in run support as well. You go to this play. This could be, again, there were plays that Sayer Wright made that really could have changed the game. Now, unfortunately, they do end up getting the first down on this play, but you take a look at this. This is how you want it to look like for your cornerbacks. Like, all right, we're seeing a little speed option. We got to come flying downhill. We know it's a short yard situation. We know we have to be physical at the point of attack. That's exactly what Sayer Wright does. Breaks down. Again, this is a play that in a lot of different realities, you're probably getting off the field and forcing a punt. I think this is phenomenal by Sayer Wright, making an open field tackle on a big bodied running back. Again, you go back and say, I know, I, I know the situation here. Right, it is third and one. We have to come downhill in a meaningful way with some purpose. Open field tackle. Unfor- I mean, if you have MJ Sherman getting out there just a half a second earlier, this is probably forcing a fourth down and a punt and changing this football game. The effort, the physicality that Sayer Wright played with as well. It's not only in coverage where he got the job done. And then the last play, the, the last play you got to talk about is him coming off the edge. You see a little bit of that 10, a 100 meter track and field time. This kid's explosive. I wouldn't be surprised if Nebraska goes to this look a little bit more and look at him, close the distance between himself and the quarterback, and then go find the football, make a game changing play. Again, there are a lot of realities. We're, we're talking about Sear Wright winning this football game for Nebraska late in the fourth quarter. If that field goal goes in, or if you can hit on that touchdown pass at the end of the game, from what you saw with Sear Wright, I think if you're a Nebraska fan, you can rely on this kid in a really meaningful way. Look, we had some, we didn't have a ton of question marks about Nebraska heading into 2024. We thought they checked a lot of boxes. You kind of look at the boxes that we see. One, I think the offensive line, even with the injuries that they've had to endure, Gunnar Gatula comes in and, yeah, you saw some redshirt freshman mistakes, but you also saw some really good play from him. Again, that was a concern we had. I think it's looked pretty good. Dylan Rayola, obviously – we had high expectations for Dylan. I think he's played even better than what the expectations say. And then you have some maybe question marks about the cornerback spot. I think Sayer Wright has certainly answered some of the depth question marks you might have as well as Bly Hill, Tommy Hill continue to get back. That's going to be a massive storyline for Nebraska. The one question you want to see them continue to try to address is the depth on the defensive line. We talked about it. Matt Rule said in his press conference, right? Illinois ran the football for what, 31 yards? in the first half, but then ran the football for almost over a hundred, I think over a hundred yards in the second half. I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think Illinois started changing things up. I think Nebraska just might not have the depth they're looking for on the defensive line. If you can find that depth heading into the rest of 2024, I think this Nebraska team starts to probably check a lot of boxes. Again, it's a disappointing loss. It's frustrating because it's another one score loss where they're not playing their best football when the ma- moment matters the most. Every press conference I listen to Matt Rule, it, it feels different from what Scott Frost would say. Scott Frost would say stuff like, yeah, we, we put ourselves in good positions, tough break. And Matt Rule takes the ultimate accountability and is like, hey, we got to play better in the big moments. You can't just play good for three quarters, but then the moment gets the biggest, we get tight as a football team. Matt Rule knows the problems. He's going to try to address them. I think you're hearing all the right things. Now you just got to see it on the football field. But there are also some really some really good things that you're seeing from this Nebraska team. It is so evident that this team's going in the right direction. And although that loss sucks, it flat out sucks, there's nothing I can say to make it feel better. I, I think you're feeling really good about where Nebraska is going as a football program. We'll close it out there again. Appreciate y'all rocking with the fellas. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.